Well, we can't not really talk yet about uh, crimes against the humanity because the um, United Nations have not had the, the chance to investigate that. And we have the mandate to help the people to, to save lives now. Um, but the situation is, uh, is very different in the southern and in the northern Tigray. In the southern Tigray, uh, we are back there now for a couple of weeks, for almost two months, and the situation is proving every day, although it's still very dire. But to the north, we are there literally only for days, and there are tens of thousands of refugees and hundreds of thousands of internally displaced persons, so Ethiopians who are refugees in their own country, who are living under terrible conditions, actually, and uh, they need help actually right now. So give us a, s a sense of the f this flow of people. Some of them are moving into Sudan, South Sudan, and some of them are trapped within Ethiopia. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. There are a little more than 60,000 people in Sudan, and there are also a couple of 10,000, so about 35,000 refugees in southern Tigray. These people are more or less in a safe place, but there are still people in northern Tigray, and we're talking about hundreds of thousands. Um, they're still fighting, um, and we know that many of the people are living under very dire conditions. So we know about people who are sleeping in open fields, who are drinking water from puddles, who are eating tree barks or roots just to survive. Uh, we are quite happy that we can go now to almost all places in Tigray, but we also see that the challenge is enormous. So tell us about those challenges. Uh, how is the conflict impacting the work you do? You're saying you're, you're, you're accessing most parts, but are you able to get in and do sufficient work and give sufficient support? Well, we were from the northern Tigray, we were banned for more than four months. It's literally only since the weekend that we could return. And uh, right now there are only assessment missions. So there are different cars with my, with my colleagues who are trying out to try out to find out where we, where we can go with, with all these checkpoints that there are. Uh, but we also find that in cities like Mikele, Shire, Sheraro, there are so many people, and we're not talking about only men and women, we're also talking about children who are really suffering there. Right now, as we talk, there is a convoy um, on the way from, from Addis Ababa, the, the capital of the country, to Mekele, the capital of the Tigray region, uh, with the so-called non-food items, so jerry cans, blankets, and, and, and different things to help uh, the refugees and the internal displaced persons. We know this is not enough, um, and that's what I meant with the challenge. Um, but, um, yeah, we, we, we start to help these people. We hope to improve the situation a every day a little. Um, but especially when it comes to hunger and malnutrition, it's a very severe situation. Yeah, so let's talk about that for a moment, because I understand a lot of, of children are close to starvation. So when you are able to get non-food items through, what about food and how, how are they making do in terms of trying to, to eat? Yeah, we do that together with our partner, the World Food Programme, the guys who received the World uh, Peace Prize, Nobel Peace Prize just a couple of months ago. Mm. Um, and um, we could help quickly the people in southern Tigray. Um, so at least we can say that, that no one goes to bed hungry in southern Tigray, in the, in the southern Tigray, Tigray refugee camps. Um, we want to do the same thing, of course, uh, for, for the northern part as well. So we we'll cooperate with the World Food Programme, with also with other partners. And uh, we hope we can step up our help very soon. But on the other hand, uh, on the other way, there are also many of the people who fled their homes are farmers. Um, they can't uh, bring in the harvest, for example. And this will, of course, um, deter the situation right there. And uh, that's why we are very, very concerned about the situation. So, Chris, when you, you, you hear of this 24-hour global village that has attracted very big names talking out about the plight of the Tigrayans, does that kind of action help? And what do you make of the international response? I really hope it will help. Um, if you see only our situation of UNHCR, the High Commissioner for Refugees, we are um, chronically underfunded, and um, maybe if, uh, this action can do some some pressure on governments or people also who, who just want to donate money, that would be already a great help. But of course, it's even more important that the world is not forgetting these people, the refugees, the internal displaced persons. They are living under conditions, I saw it with my own eyes, 
we really can't imagine uh, in, the, in the Western world. Um, and every help is absolutely welcome. Every penny, but actually also every tweet, every headline, and even it's just two people sitting in a, a hairdresser talking about that, that helps as well because it's awareness for people in need. Chris, appreciate you helping us do that tonight. Thank you.